Welcome to the Clutch Tech Support Clutch Installation Lab. I'm here at the demonstration bench today and I've got a master cylinder line and slave cylinder from a 97 and older Ford 7.3. Now it doesn't look like it should be that difficult to bleed this system out. Master, line, slave, it even has a bleed vent on the bleed screw down here. But this can represent a few challenges and one of them is that this system by design has a pretty small opening for the fluid to flow from the reservoir into the master cylinder pressure chamber. So when you go to push on the pedal, sometimes there's really nothing there. It didn't get a charge of fluid. So how are we going to fill this system up? We're going to compress the slave cylinder, push it back, that'll push a large volume of air up through the system, and then we let it expand, it pulls fluid in. We'll repeat that process several times, and then We'll use dry vacuum bleeding on the top of the reservoir to show you how we can finish it off and not even touch the fluid. Let's take a look at this pushback and dry vacuum bleeding approach to this hydraulic release system. Now I've pretty well filled the reservoir up with fluid. I'm at the slave cylinder and I'm just going to kind of gently compress the slave cylinder. I just don't want to send fluid flying out. As I compress it, bubbles come out. When I let the slave cylinder expand in my hand, it's going to pull fluid in. There's a spring back there that's pushing the piston back out. Compress a little bit more. I'm going to repeat this process for a few minutes here and just keep pushing bubbles out and pulling fluid in. So far, I haven't lost a drop of fluid, so far. Now there are straps, shipping straps, on the end of the slave cylinder. For this purpose, I just pushed it in and disconnected it. When I'm done, I'll connect them up again before I install it. Just make things a little easier. So we're doing pretty good. We've drawn in quite a bit of fluid already. Now I did the pushback until I think we exhausted pretty much all the bubbles, but here's this dry vacuum bleeding technique. And the first time we ran into this was when we were working on a Ford, a 2005 Mustang GT. I think it was the first year that they came out with a concentric slave cylinder and they actually went into the uh, brake reservoir for the clutch reservoir. So we learned about dry vacuum bleeding. There's no bleed screw on that Ford slave cylinder at all. And that's an internal. So the procedure is to again use the hand operated vacuum pump, catch reservoir, and a rubber stopper. So we're just going to apply vacuum to the top of the reservoir. And both Ford and General Motors have recognized this and issued bulletin information about it. So we apply vacuum to the top. 15, 20 inches, and just let it sit. So we're just going to let the vacuum pull on the fluid, and somehow it pulls the air bubbles up and out. Clean system, make sure you've got a trap so that you don't pull, risk any chance of pulling fluid in. But this is all you do. Now, go away for, you know, Five, ten minutes, come back, check it, and it just pulls the bubbles out. Well, all it took to get this one to bleed out was taking a look at it and understanding where the bubbles are, what the configuration of the master cylinder is, and then we just let the air go up, pull fluid in, and finish it off with a little bit of dry vacuum bleeding. If you have any questions about a clutch hydraulic release system, a clutch, or a flywheel, please call our toll-free tech support hotline. Please check your vehicle's owner's manual for specifications on the correct fluid to use in your clutch hydraulic release system. Using the wrong fluid, such as power steering fluid, motor oil, transmission fluid, will damage the internal seals of your hydraulic system components.